most seniors believe gray hair is simply the price of getting older. That once the color fades, there is nothing left to do but accept it or cover it up. But what if graying hair is not a sign of age at all, but a quiet message from the body that you need to change something? In fact, research published in the Journal of Dermatological Science and Experimental Gerontology shows that early graying is strongly linked to oxidative stress, chronic inflammation, and changes in nutrient signaling, which is something we can control. So in today's episode of the Senior Health Podcast, Japan's oldest doctor will explain why hair color begins to fade earlier than expected and what you can do to slow or even reverse that process naturally. He will explain five solutions that help protect pigment as we age. So doctor, shall we begin? Of course, John. Let's begin. Speaking about gray hair is important because color is not just about appearance. It reflects how well the body is protecting itself, how calmly it is aging, and how supported the body still feels inside. When hair starts to lose its color, it's often the body asking for attention, not intervention. Before we dive in, drop a 1 in the comments if you're already seeing gray hair, or a 2 if you don't yet but want to keep it that way. Either way, this episode will be very useful for you. That really lands with me. I hear from so many seniors who say the first gray strands did not just change how they look, but how they feel about themselves and their future. Yes, and that feeling often comes from not understanding what the body is trying to say. When we listen more carefully, we often discover there is still time to respond. So let's start there. For seniors who are noticing their hair turning gray faster than expected, what is really happening inside the body that causes this change in the first place, and what can they do about it? Let's start by picturing the hair follicle as a small living factory that depends on balance. In many seniors, graying begins when that balance is disturbed, not when the factory shuts down. It is a signal that the body is under strain long before anything is truly lost. I hear that a lot in seniors, that moment when they realize the change feels sudden and personal. It is not just appearance. It feels like the body skipped a step without asking permission. Yes, and that emotional reaction matters because it tells us this change is noticed early. Premature graying often appears when the body is quietly managing stress, inflammation, or nutrient shifts beneath the surface. The hair responds quickly because it is sensitive, not because it is weak. That reframes it in a way that feels gentler and more hopeful. Exactly. Hair color is one of the first places the body shows us it is working harder than it should. When you understand that, the fear softens and curiosity can take its place. That curiosity alone already feels like a turning point. The key here is that graying is rarely random. It reflects how the body is distributing energy, how well it is protecting cells, and how calm the internal environment feels day to day. When those systems are under pressure, pigment is often one of the first things to be sacrificed. Hearing that helps you feel less like something is broken. Yes, and this leads us forward. Once you see graying as a process rather than a verdict, you realize there are stages where the body can still be supported. The important part is understanding what actually changes inside before color fades completely. That makes me want to slow down and really understand the sequence. So before you give us the solution, what exactly is happening inside the body that causes hair to lose its color as we age? Let's begin at the root. Hair gets its color from pigment made inside the follicle, and that pigment depends on steady energy, protection, and clear signaling. As seniors age, those signals can weaken, not because the follicle is gone, but because the environment around it becomes harsher. Color fades when protection fades first. That picture feels surprisingly gentle. It makes it sound less like something breaking and more like something being overwhelmed. Yes, and that distinction matters. Pigment-producing cells are sensitive to stress and oxidation, and when the body is under constant pressure, those cells shift from creating to surviving. 
Over time, small amounts of hydrogen peroxide build up inside the hair shaft, and as the body's cleanup slows, that peroxide begins bleaching pigment from the inside out, so the color isn't disappearing overnight, it's being slowly washed away. Exactly. Stress accelerates this by increasing oxidative load while draining. The body's defenses. Seniors often notice graying speed up during difficult seasons, not random ones, and that pattern shows up again and again. That feels like an important turning point. If stress is quietly driving this process, what is the very first thing seniors can do to slow that internal bleaching and protect what is still there? Let's dive into the first solution. When stress stays high, the body produces more oxidative byproducts and pigment cells are often the first to suffer. The very first step is not a product or a pill, but creating daily signals of safety so the body can stop sacrificing color to survive. That feels both simple and surprisingly deep. Seniors often expect a topical fix, not something that begins inside the nervous system. Yes, and that expectation is understandable. Chronic stress quietly increases cortisol, which in turn raises internal oxidation and hydrogen peroxide levels. When that pressure eases, the body often regains its ability to protect pigment without force. That helps explain why stressful seasons seem to leave a visible mark. Of course. I hear that a lot in seniors who notice their hair changing during caregiving, illness or long periods of worry. Even small daily calming rituals can lower that internal noise enough to slow the bleaching process. That makes the idea of stress reduction feel far more concrete. The key here is consistency, not intensity. Gentle breathing before bed, steady sleep times, and reducing late evening stimulation all send a message that the day is safe. When the nervous system settles, pigment cells are no longer pushed into retreat. That feels doable and respectful of real life. Yes. Once stress is reduced, the body becomes far more receptive to nourishment. Without that calm foundation, even the best nutrients struggle to reach where they are needed. That connection between calm and nourishment feels important. If stress creates the opening, what comes next to help the body actually rebuild from the inside? For the second solution, I often look to the gut next. When stress lingers, digestion becomes less efficient, even if meals are healthy. If nutrients aren't absorbed properly, the hair never gets the support it needs to recover. That lands deeply, because I hear that a lot in seniors who say they eat healthy, but still feel depleted. It can feel confusing and discouraging when effort does not seem to translate into results. Yes, and that confusion is understandable. The gut changes with age, medications and stress, which can quietly reduce absorption even when the diet looks good on paper. Healing the gut is about restoring trust between what you eat and what the body can actually use. That idea of restoring trust really resonates. The key here is gentle repair, not restriction. Fermented foods like yogurt or kefir can help rebalance the gut environment and simple Herbal supports can calm inflammation so nutrients pass through instead of being lost. When digestion settles, the body becomes far more responsive. It sounds like this step supports everything that follows. Exactly. Once absorption improves, the body can finally receive the raw materials needed to make pigment again. Without that foundation, even the right foods cannot do their job. That sequence makes a lot of sense when you hear it laid out this way. And here is the quiet promise. When the gut begins to heal, you often notice changes beyond hair, like steadier energy or better sleep. Those are signs the body is ready for the next layer of support. That makes me lean in, because it suggests momentum is building. Once the gut can absorb properly, what is the next step for protecting and rebuilding hair color? Once absorption improves, the next solution is giving the body the right tools to rebuild color. One of the most important is copper, because it helps the body switch pigment production back on. Without it reaching the follicle, even a calm, nourished system struggles to make melanin. 
That surprises me, because copper is not something seniors talk about very often. It feels almost invisible, compared to more familiar nutrients. Yes, and that is why it is often missed. Copper works behind the scenes, helping the body turn raw materials into color instead of leaving them unused. When seniors are under stress for long periods, copper stores can quietly decline faster than they are replenished. That makes the timing of this step feel very intentional. The key here is nourishment, not correction. Copper-rich foods support pigment gently, allowing the body to rebuild capacity instead of forcing output. When absorption is working and copper is available, melanin cells often regain some of their confidence. That confidence metaphor really helps me picture the process. Of course, foods like mushrooms, certain seafoods, and even small amounts of olives can provide copper in a form the body recognizes. This approach respects balance because too much supplementation without context can disrupt other minerals. That balance feels especially important for seniors managing multiple health considerations. And here is where another layer appears. Even with good copper support, pigment can still be lost if internal oxidation remains high. This is where the body's natural cleanup systems become just as important as nourishment. That makes me pause, because it sounds like protection matters as much as rebuilding. How does the body clear that internal bleaching? And what, and what can seniors do to support that process? Well, the body already has a cleanup system for this kind of internal bleaching. It relies on an enzyme called catalase, which breaks down hydrogen peroxide before it can damage pigment. As you age, Catalase activity naturally slows, and that is when whitening accelerates. That's fascinating because it means the body is not passive in this process. It has defenses, but they need support. Yes, and this is where protection becomes just as important as rebuilding. When catalase levels are supported, hydrogen peroxide is neutralized instead of accumulating. You often do not lose color because they lack pigment, but because they lose protection. That distinction feels powerful and surprisingly reassuring. The key here is supporting the body's own antioxidant rhythm. Foods that naturally encourage catalase activity help the body clear oxidative stress quietly and consistently. This reduces the internal bleaching that undermines all the other work we have discussed. It sounds like this step helps everything else last longer. Exactly. When oxidation is lowered, pigment cells are no longer fighting a constant chemical attack. That calmer environment allows melanin to survive longer and function more efficiently. Protection angle really changes how I think about aging hair. Once you support catalase and reduce oxidative pressure, the body becomes far more responsive to additional antioxidants. There is another layer of protection that works alongside catalase to steady the system even further. I'm really starting to see how these pieces fit together. So what is the layer you are talking about? Once that foundation is in place, the next solution seniors should focus on is protection. And this is where antioxidant support becomes important, especially through vitamin E. It helps reduce the quiet oxidative wear that slowly strips pigment over time. That's interesting because vitamin E is familiar, yet most seniors don't connect it to hair color at all. It's usually talked about in the context of skin or heart health. Yes, and that reminds me how often simple nutrients are misunderstood. Vitamin E works quietly by buffering oxidative stress, which gives catalase and other enzymes room to do their job. You can get it from foods like nuts, seeds and leafy greens, and in some cases, gentle supplementation is considered, always with balance in mind. That balance piece really matters, especially for seniors already managing medications. Exactly. The key here is support, not overload. When antioxidant intake is steady and appropriate, the body maintains a calmer internal environment where pigment can persist instead of being constantly stripped away. That steadiness feels like the theme that keeps returning. 
and this leads us forward. Even with nutrients and antioxidants in place, the nervous system still sets the overall tone. There is a daily rhythm that decides whether all this support is used or wasted. That sounds like even small daily patterns still matter a lot. What do you usually guide seniors toward next? I guide my patients to start bringing calm into the smallest moments of the day. The nervous system listens constantly, especially in seniors, and it responds more to rhythm than to effort. Simple routines like consistent sleep, gentle morning light, and slow breathing tell the body it is safe to maintain long-term functions like pigment. That feels reassuring because it takes pressure off doing everything perfectly. It suggests small choices still carry real weight. Yes, and that reminds me how often seniors underestimate those small choices. When evenings become quieter and mornings more predictable, stress hormones fall and repair hormones rise. Over time, this steadiness protects everything we have discussed, from digestion to pigment stability. It sounds like calm becomes the glue that holds all the other steps together. Exactly. The key here is repetition without strain. A short walk at the same time each day, reducing late-night news or screens, and pausing before meals all help reset the nervous system. When that system settles, the body stops rushing and starts preserving. That idea of preservation feels deeply respectful of aging. When the nervous system is calm, the body becomes more receptive to traditions that have supported balance for generations. Some cultures built their daily lives around this idea without ever naming it. So how tradition fits into all of this? What is the next step for seniors once daily rhythm is in place? It's simplicity, John. In many long-standing cultures, daily life was shaped to reduce strain on the body instead of pushing it. Those habits quietly supported calm, digestion, and renewal all at once. That feels comforting, almost like permission to slow down. Seniors often feel pressure to add more instead of returning to something simpler. Yes, and that reminds me how tradition often worked quietly without calling attention to itself. Simple meals, regular timing, and foods prepared gently helped the body stay balanced. Over time, that balance supported circulation and pigment without needing force or correction. It sounds like tradition worked with the body instead of fixing it. Exactly. Tradition rarely asked for perfection, only repetition. When seniors follow familiar habits, the body stays nourished and calm at the same time, which feels very different from modern advice that pushes constant change. That regularity feels more sustainable for seniors. And this leads us forward. When food and rhythm are steady, the day organizes itself naturally. That organization allows digestion, nourishment, and repair to work together instead of competing. I can feel how these pieces are starting to connect. When one calm habit anchors the day, everything else begins to fall into place. The body resists less, recognizes the pattern, and starts cooperating naturally. Sometimes the most meaningful changes happen when effort steps aside. That makes it feel simpler and far less overwhelming. Yes. Aging is not something to fight, but something to listen to. When seniors trust small rhythms and stay gentle with themselves, confidence grows quietly, just like a health does. That feels like a powerful way to end this journey. How do you help seniors hold on to that perspective and carry it forward with confidence as they continue aging? By reminding them that aging is not something to fight, but something to listen to. When you trust small daily rhythms and stay gentle with yourself, confidence grows quietly, just like health does. This takes the pressure off trying to fix everything at once. Now, if you are still here, we are proud of you since you are setting the first step. Before you leave, please make sure to like the video, leave a comment, and subscribe to the channel. Oh, and watch this next video right now. Yes, please. We've picked this one especially for you.